Welcome to June Jubilee, everybody. I'd like to welcome you here tonight. If you're a first-time visitor, make yourself at home. We're just regular people. Amen. We're saved, though. Amen. And uh, we just want to praise the Lord and worship Him tonight. And uh, it's all about Jesus Christ. Amen. It's everything about Jesus, and uh, I hope that you'll be blessed tonight with, uh, with the singing and the preaching tonight, and I hope you'll be able to come back tomorrow night and Friday night, too. We're just going to have a great week in the Lord. Amen? All right. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air, coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Head for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. You're invited to the happy jubilee. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. You're invited to the happy jubilee. When with all that heavenly host we began to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be, praising Christ to ages long, heaven's jubilee. Jubilee, 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 jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. Jubilee, jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. You're invited to a happy jubilee. <laughs> well, amen. Number two. Yes, sir. Share a book. Sing real loud for me. Amen. Here we go. Down at the cross where the Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood of life Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory Wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within There at the cross where he took me in Glory to his name Glory to his name Glory to his name There to my heart was the blood Glory to His name, O oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I'm so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to His name. Glory to Fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Unge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of. Good. You give yourself a hand, and I tell you what, give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Page 203. He keeps me singing. Amen. Page 203. Oh, he'll do that if you'll let him. Yes, sir. Page 203. He keeps me singing. Here we go. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still. In all of 
大赦免我。Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, sweetest name I know. Heals my every longing, keeps me singing as I go on the last. Soon he's coming back to welcome me. Far beyond the starry sky, I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with Him on high. Jesus, 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 Amen. Name I know fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. Good singing. We're not done. Amen. Page 223. Victory in Jesus. Oh, I know yeah. you know this one. Victory in Jesus. 223. Amen. I heard an old, old story. Yes, sir. Singing. I heard an old, old story. How the Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing. Of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Singing, oh, victory in Jesus. Jesus, my Savior, forever. He sought me. He bought me. Amen. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, and he's building a mansion, singing. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I'm going to have you to stand right now if you'd help me out. Yes, yes. I want us to sing that little chorus. Stand if you would, please. Thank you. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Yes, it's not in your book. Our home folk know the chorus. Let's sing it, all righty? And we'll sing it a couple times so you'll catch on. Singing. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus, I love. 
love him more and more Jesus saves and keeps me and he's the one I'm waiting for every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before and all the believers said amen, amen. amen. sing it again every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before every day with Jesus I love him more and more Jesus saves and keeps me and he's the one I'm waiting for every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before y'all are good you may be seated troubles and trials seem more than enough when my road looks so rugged and my way seems so rough I remember his promise he's with me all the way let me feel that way. Then I get the strength I need to face another day. He's ready to come, and I'm ready to go. There's one thing I know I know Jesus is coming Amen To call his church away He's ready to come And I'm ready to go And it could be today Well I know I can make it Thank the Lord. I'll make it all the way home. Cause when I feel the weakest, that's when he makes me strong. Well, I know I can count on him. When on his word I stand. Yes, I will to that sweet promised land. How many want to go there? He's ready to come, and I'm ready to go. I can't tell you the hour, but there's one thing I know. is coming oh yes he is to call his church away he's ready to come and I'm ready to go and it could be today amen praise the Lord he said the, he was coming back he's gone away to prepare us a place that where he is we can be also amen and if he went away, he's coming back, brother, to get us. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you forever be with him. Thank you, Lord. And assurance we can have down in our hearts that if he's to call us out of this life tonight, we'll be ready to meet him. Thank you, Lord. My Lord, I 
stand Just think about that Well I'm gonna reach out And take my Savior's hand Thank you Lord I'll say thank you Jesus For letting me know Thank you You were ready to come Oh, praise your name, so I'd be ready to go. If you know it, help me sing it. He's ready to come, and I'm ready to go. I can't tell you the hour, but there's one thing I know. is coming oh yes he is to call his church away he's ready to come I'm ready to go and it could be today right now before this service is over he's ready to come I'm ready
Well, I'll try not to be too long because I haven't had dinner yet and I'm starting to get a little hungry. Amen? Amen. All right, that ought to be encouraging. Most encouraging words you probably heard tonight. Amen? <laughs> if you have your Bibles with you and you want to follow along, I'll be in Romans chapter number 5. Romans chapter number 5. Again, I'd like to make you welcome to the June Jubilee. I hope you'll come back tomorrow night. We have a special guest singer with us tomorrow night, Brother Rick Moreland. How many people know Brother Rick? Amen. How many people have heard him sing? Amen. Is he a good singer? Amen. 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 So come back tomorrow night and Brother Ray Thomas will be preaching for us tomorrow night. Amen. Yep. Amen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Amen. Yep. All right. I want us to look at uh, chapter 4, verse number 25, and then we'll go to chapter 5. Verse number 25 in chapter 4 in the book of Romans says, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Verse number 1 in, verse, in chapter 5, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for this time of the service. And Father, I prayed and asked the Lord that you would bless me, that you would empower me, Holy Spirit. I pray that you are blessed in the message tonight. God, bless me that I could be a blessing to these precious folks that have come out here tonight to hear the Word of God. I pray, Father, there be something said, Holy Spirit, uh, that would encourage someone. And I pray that the name of Jesus Christ to be lifted up above all names tonight, Lord. And I pray, Father, you'll have your way in this service tonight. God, there's one among us that does not know Jesus. They've never been saved. I pray that tonight would be the night. And I pray, God, for Christians that might have questions and concerns and wondering, uh, is God satisfied with me? I pray, Lord, tonight that they'll hear something that will be encouraging to them. And, Father, I'll thank you for that and praise you for it now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen, amen and Amen. I like verse number 2 in chapter 5 of Romans. It says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace, and I like this, wherein we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Let's just give the Lord a hand for that. Amen. Amen. Tonight, as we begin this June Jubilee, I want to tell you that our theme this year is grace, the glorious theme. Amen. It's the grace of God, and that's the glorious theme of the whole Bible. Amen. It took me many, many years to understand that. During my spiritual walk, I have to tell you, most of, most of all of my life of uh, being a Christian, I did not understand anything about the grace of God other than Ephesians chapter 2 that, that told me that I was saved by grace through faith. Amen. That's all I really knew about grace. I was just glad to be saved. Amen. I was just glad to know I'm going to go to heaven when I die. And I'm still going to go to heaven when I die. Amen. Nothing's ever happened to that agreement with God and me. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. But you know what? Uh, I was just glad to be saved, but during my walk as a, as a born-again boy and, and young adult, young teenager and, and, and adult today, a lot of times, I mean, I was miserable because I had all of these beliefs of all these rules that I heard that I was supposed to be keeping. Yeah. Amen? And I, was, and I was trying to live up to all of those things, and it turned out that all of those rules and all of those regulations and all of those commandments turned out to be nothing more but a taskmaster. Yeah. Remember the taskmasters that was in Israel over the children of Israel? And they, they were just taskmasters to me. I had a lot of rules that I was supposed to be doing. And man, if I broke one of those, I had so much deep guilt in my soul. I didn't know what to do. And I thought all along I was trained that it was the Holy Spirit that was telling me that I should feel guilty. Yeah. And what it was was the conscience of my own self. Because here's why. The Holy Spirit is an encourager, and the Holy Spirit will convict the believer of his righteousness. Yes. That's grace, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. The Holy Spirit convicts the sinner of sin, but he convicts the believer of his righteousness in Christ. Amen. There were many, many days of sadness and, and disappointment because I wanted to do so well, but often I was doing so terribly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. But you know, things began to change for me in the year 2012. What a year. Uh, God set me up. Amen. Yeah. It had been at least 25 years or, or maybe a little bit more since I had seen Ray and Mike. And uh, one day, God connected us back together in a, in a mighty, 
awesome way is the only thing I could say about that. Now these two guys, they had been introduced to the grace message for years before me. And when I met with them that day, I won't forget how they began to share with me some things that I had never, ever been taught before in my life. And you know what? It was all coming right out of the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? Now you know you can be taught a lot of things. But brother, if it ain't coming right out of here, then you just need to discard it. Amen? But I had been trained in so many, uh, they had too, but they had, uh, God had showed them some things about His Word and about His amazing grace that had lit their fire. Amen? And that day that I showed up, it began to light my fire. Amen? It was one book after another, then reading the Bible with a different point of view. Reading the Bible in view of the new covenant of grace. Amen? <laughs> what a day. Then I discovered a radio program called Basic Gospel. And man, when that came into my life, between the four of these guys, Ray and Mike, the Basic Gospel and the Holy Spirit, yeah. amen, yeah. the four, yeah. the four that meant a lot to me, my Christian life, man, it began to make a change, amen. There is a life of assurance that God always loves you and likes you and favors you in the gospel of grace. And you don't hear that from many pulpits today. God never turns his face away from you. I'd never heard that before. I'd always been told that, man, if you sin, God's looking the other way. He ain't going to look at you because he's disappointed in you. I've been taught those things. You know, uh, I, I was also told, and this is new information. Now listen to me. I'm saying some things tonight that maybe you might be hearing for the very first time. And I don't want you to be critical until you promise that you'll go home and look this up and study it yourself. Amen? Amen? And then we can talk about it if you want to. But I was always told that, man, if you commit too many sins, you're going to fall out of fellowship with God. I got an amen or two out there. I was told I would fall out of fellowship with Him. And later what I really found out, though, that thrilled me to pieces is that God got all of me that he ever desired to have, and that was my heart. God got all of me that he ever wanted in my whole life. It was my heart. <laughs> God has made me complete in him, and he has taught me, and I found out that I am a Romans chapter 6 type of guy. I am dead to sin. I am dead to sin. Yes. Now that may sound strange to you. I'm also a Romans chapter 7 type of guy knowing that Christ will deliver me when I struggle. Yes. And I also found out that I'm a Romans 8. This is a joyful part right here. I'm a Romans 8 1 type of guy. I will never come under condemnation because I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yes. I'm talking about a love, a liberty, a freedom, an assurance that is all found in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now, I enjoy my walk with Jesus more than I ever have in my whole life be uh, before because I finally discovered this, ladies and gentlemen. I finally discovered the glorious theme of the whole Bible, which is the grace of God. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now, listen to me. If you haven't already... At least in the next couple of days, you're going to hear some things that may sound brand new to you. And, and listen to me. We're not preaching off the cuff. These are things that have been studied out and looked into and prayed over. Amen? Yes. Prayed over and asking God. Uh, I, I wish I could do this demonstration as good as you. <laughs> Amen? But that's what it's been like. Amen? And, and, and listen to me. When you've been indoctrinated all your life, all your spiritual life, with things that you better do, you better not, you better have, and God's disappointed, brother, that will scare the pants off anybody. Amen? Amen. But when you find out just how free and how liberated you are in Jesus Christ, it will change your world. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. It's called grace, ladies and gentlemen. It's called grace. So before you jump to a conclusion of disagreement, take some notes if you need to and study it out yourself. And remember this. Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. When Jesus saved you, he did not save you to beat you down every chance he had. Amen? You know, it is hard to break old habits. Amen? I'm a, I'm a, 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 I'm a musician of sorts. I have learned many, many bad habits about playing a guitar. I have learned bad habits about playing the guitar. 
And when somebody says, no, it'd be easier if you do it this way, that just gets me because it's so hard to change. You know, if an athlete has a bad habit, he's not going to be very competitive. If you have learned bad habits regarding the Word of God, it may take you a while to get fixed. Amen? It may take you a while to get fixed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not telling you anything tonight that is not in the Word of God. I'm telling you tonight that we don't need religion. We need Jesus Christ. Amen? Religion is full of commandments and rules and regulations and you better do's and you better don'ts. But Jesus says it's all about Him. Amen? It's just all about Him. He didn't come. He did not come to make you and I a beast of burden by bridling you with old covenant commands. He came to set us free, bringing us into a new and a better covenant that He calls grace. Amen? I, if you haven't read the book of Romans yet, you're missing a fantastic book, ladies and gentlemen. Amen? In the first three chapters, Paul, is in, he's the inspired writer, and he is, he, he, he's writing to us about the fallen state of the human race. But then he tells us about a wonderful God who is the God of all people, the Jews and the Gentiles. And then uh, he says, for whosoever you are, you're qualified to fit into God's plan of redemption. Amen? If you're here tonight and you think you're not qualified, I've got news for you. You and I are all qualified to fit in God's plan of redemption. Amen? Yeah. And I'm so thankful tonight that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? That is God's word. In chapter 4, Paul dives right into this topic of justification by faith. Now, the emphasis in chapter 4 is belief upon God, who is the only one who can justify man by faith. Amen? Yes. That's how you got justified. And by the way, I'm going to talk to you about justification tonight. Do you know that you are justified in, in the eyes of God? Did you know that you've been made right with God? You and I, we have entered into a new covenant. Amen? You know, ladies and gentlemen, justification by faith has no relationship with the works of man. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man would boast. Amen? Amen. Justification by faith has no relationship with water baptism or taking a, a communion or, or being fleshly circumcised. And uh, finally, he emphasizes that justification by faith is completely apart from the law of Moses. Amen. We have entered into a new covenant, meaning this. Salvation is by grace through faith. Can you say amen to that? Yes. Amen. Amen. We are completely separated from any works of man and that grace has come to us only and by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The finished work there at Calvary. At the cross our sins were all forgiven. Christ was buried and in three dater, three daters. Uh, so you are paying attention. I did that on purpose. Three days later he was resurrected from the dead on that first Easter morning. Amen. Amen. Christ was gloriously raised from the dead. And the very last verse of Romans chapter 4 says this, Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Amen? Amen. Meaning that God has, listen to me, God has declared you and I accepted in, yes. in Him. Amen? Yes. If you're justified tonight, you're accepted by God. Yes. I've been accepted by God. I said the other day in my message here, let's see if you're paying attention. I've been made perfect. Amen. I ain't talking about this flesh man that you see. I'm talking about that spirit man that God has saved. Amen. God has made me. God has perfected me. God has made me perfect. If you're saved, if you want to believe it or not, you've been made perfect. It's up to you whether you want to believe it or not. It is in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I said, I made a statement the other day, this is not a revival meeting, okay? I'm being friendly about this. This is not a revival meeting. Amen. Revival is talking about raising up something that's dead. Yeah. We're not dead. Amen. We've been made alive. Our spirits have been quickened by the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. We are alive people in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So what we're learning here tonight are the things of God. Jesus said if we would learn about Him, if we would uh, grow in grace and knowledge of Him, guess what? You're going to start learning a lot of things about Jesus that you didn't know. And, and along the way, you're going to be growing. Yes, amen. amen. You're going to be growing. You know what I decided? I decided I want to start growing. Yeah. 
Yeah. I want to start growing spiritually. Amen. I want to know all I can about Jesus Christ. And that's all I want to know. You know, you can have your politics preaching and, and you can have all of this rule keeping preaching and you can have everything else. Just give me Jesus Christ. Amen. Give me a whole plate of Jesus Christ. That's all I want to know. When you learn about him, you'll know how to act. You'll know how you ought to vote. You'll know how you ought to do a lot of things. Amen. If you know Christ, if you're following him, amen. And then Paul begins chapter 5 with this word, therefore. Now that word is a, is a word that's used and it means it is the conclusion of a lot of things that's already been said. Amen? We're justified by faith. Ephesians chapter 3, 17 says that Jesus dwells in my heart by faith. You know what that means? You know what that word dwells means? That means that Jesus inhibits my life. Jesus Christ inhibits my life. Amen? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. How wonderful that it is to know that as a born again believer that I have absolute peace with God through Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't have peace with God by going on visitation. I don't have peace with God by tithing. I don't have peace with God by getting baptized. I don't have peace with God by anything else. I have peace with God through Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God. It is only Jesus that can give us peace. It is only Christ that justifies us being good and keeping rules and doing this and doing that, being busy, 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 busy. That don't justify you. Jesus Christ justified you by His glorious resurrection. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. yes. Glory. Let me tell you something. I want you to see the confidence that Paul had in that statement. There is nothing conditional about our peace with God. Oh, that's one of my favorite things to say tonight. Yes. There is nothing conditional about my peace with God. Amen? Amen. Mm. Serious quiet in here. I, I hope you're thinking about what I'm saying. Now, you know, that statement that I just said, it will lead us into some territory that's uncomfortable for a lot of believers. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience. When I first started hearing things like this, I thought, man, now come on. Come on now. That just can't be. That just don't sound right. Amen? <sighs> We've been indoctrinated over the years of learning that our living the Christian life involves good performances, record keeping to keep God happy. You know what? I discovered this as I was finishing up this message today. I had never ever in my whole spiritual life ever heard any preacher preach on Colossians chapter 2 verses 21 and 22 where the Bible says, touch not, taste not, handle not. The next verse says, those things are perishable doctrines of men. Yeah. What he's talking about is all of these rules that people come up with that you're supposed to be doing and you better act like this and you better not go there and you, and you, 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 and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. Where's Jesus in all of that? Yeah. Amen? You know, folks, it is not about me, but it's about Him. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to see that tonight. For you, for you, it's about Jesus Christ. How that He dwells in you. He inhabits you tonight. <laughs> and He lives His resurrected life in you and through you. Amen? Amen? Amen. A lot of times we feel like we've got to keep God happy. And you know what? If a born-again believer is living their life that way, I can guarantee you that you don't have total peace in your life. Amen. You don't have total peace because you're always worried. You ever done something wrong? When you did it, was you like... Yeah. I hope they didn't see that. Hope I don't get caught on that. Did you ever do something wrong? Yeah. And it made you feel that way? Yeah. You know what? You didn't have any peace, did you? And so we have been indoctrinated that that's how God is. Yeah. That if, boy, we mess up, we better be looking over our shoulders. Let me just give you a little bit of good information here right now. God can snuff us out like that if He wants to. Right. Amen? Yeah. So if you think you've been that bad, why are you still here? Amen? Yeah. It's called the grace of God. <laughs> Amen? It's called the grace of God. Um, I, I, I want to come back to this. I, for years, you know, all I ever heard preach was 
don't touch this, uh, don't taste that, don't handle this. But nobody ever followed that up by saying these are perishable doctrines of men. I was just told not to do it. And then I found out that some of them, some of the men who was telling me not to do it, were doing it. Amen. Amen. That's why, listen, that's why I'm about Jesus Christ. That's the message you're going to hear at Graceway Fellowship Church. I can't do anything for myself that's going to help me with God. It's Jesus or nothing. It's all Jesus or nothing. Amen. If I could do something, I would be bragging about it. But I ain't bragging because I know I can't do it. It is His grace or nothing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so if you're concentrating on having the peace of God, you're not very happy. But let me tell you something. You can have peace with God. Yes. There yes. is a difference of the peace of God, but the peace with God. Yes. You know what that means, the peace with God? That means that you got born again, amen? That means you got saved. That means that whatever you want to call it, your name is on the record book of heaven, and you're going there someday because God has justified you, and God has made you have peace with Him, amen? Amen. One is emotional, and the other one is a fact. What I can tell you is that Paul had good news for us. I'm talking about the unconditional peace with God that the born-again believer has with the God of the universe that is based solely upon what Jesus Christ accomplished at the cross and His glorious resurrection. If that's not it, then there's nothing. Amen? Hmm. One of my favorite passages comes out of the Old Testament, Isaiah 26.3. Thou would keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. This, as I said, is an Old Testament verse, and it has the word peace in it, and this peace is referring to having peace in our human relationships. Peace from, uh, peace from war or quietness, peace of having wealth and health. And I understand that kind of peace, and I like that kind of peace, amen? Yeah. amen. That's good peace, right? But as we move into the new covenant, and by the way, has anybody told you that this is where we live? We live, you and I, we live in the new covenant of grace. Yes. We don't live in the old covenant. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's just give Jesus Christ a good hand tonight. Amen. Come on. And I want to give him a, a, a hand like that because he's the one who brought the new covenant of grace into us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That was the purpose of why Jesus came was to give us the new covenant. It is a new and better covenant than what Israel had with God. Yeah. Can you believe that you and I have a better covenant than what Israel had? I'm talking about God's chosen people. We got a better deal than they did. Amen. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. The unmerited favor of God toward man, it's called grace. Paul had many physical struggles in his ministry that I'm sure that brought a lot of anxiety to his human flesh. Has anybody here ever gone through that? Anxieties and you had troubles in your flesh? But for his inner man, he knew the new creation he had become. There was the peace that came with it and it brought assurance and a spiritual calmness that he never struggled with. Paul never struggled with his spiritual life. He struggled in his flesh with that thorn in the flesh, and he struggled because people was trying to kill him constantly. But he never struggled with his relationship with God. Paul knew he had peace with God. Paul understood he was justified with God. Amen? When we understand, ladies and gentlemen, when you understand that you've been justified, glory to God, you're going to have some peace about that. Amen? <laughs> I got perfect peace tonight. Amen. Yeah. Woo yeah. Glory. Brother, I ain't worried about a fiery burning hell. I don't want other people to go there. It's there. There are people there now, and it's hurting, and it's hot. Yes. And they're crying. They're in agony. I won't go there. 
I've been justified. I am no longer at war with God. I'm no longer at enmity with God. I am justified by God through the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, and now I have perfect peace with God. Amen. If the Lord takes me home tonight, I leave here with peace with God. Amen. Amen. Oh, Brother Tim, are you saying that you never sin anymore? No, I didn't say I don't sin anymore. Well, what if you do sin? I got peace with God. Amen. What if you keep doing the same sin over and over again? I got peace with Amen. God. Yeah. You know why? Because my sins do not depend on me being justified. It is Jesus that justified me. It is Jesus that rose out of the grave. Not my sins, yeah. not my works, not my tithing, not my baptism. It's the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what justified me. And if you're saved, that's how you got justified. Yes. And if you're saved, whether you want to understand it, whether you want to believe it, whether you want to accept what I'm saying tonight, you've got peace with God. Yes, amen. And I'll tell you what. Whoo, well, glory. When you get this down, that you are, you're, you're at peace with God, you're going to stop worrying about all your little mess-ups. Yeah. You're going to stop being uh, worried about what God's thinking. Yeah. I can tell you what God's thinking. I love you, Brother yes. Tim. Amen. Oh, Brother Dan, I love you. Brother Ray, I love you. I know you messed up, Kim, but I love you. I'm crazy about you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, do you understand, son? You're justified with me. <laughs> oh, do you understand, yeah. my child, that you have perfect peace with me? You leave this building tonight if you're saved. You leave here tonight knowing that you have peace with God. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you why I'm telling you this. Because the very next time you sin, and it might be before you get out of here, the devil's going to come along and tell you how crummy you are, yeah. how bad you are, how wrong you are, how wrong that brother Tim is. You're not justified. If you sin, God's keeping record. No, he ain't. Hebrews 10 tells us that God remembers our sin no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Glory. Well, glory. I'm walking in God's sunshine, happy as I go. Amen. Yes. That's why. That's why, because I'm justified. I'm justified by His grace. I'm justified by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There ain't no devil that's able to come against me because he can't come against the resurrection. There ain't no devil can come against me because I've got Jesus living in me. The, the devil cannot enter a place where Christ lives. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Listen, Jesus is skin deep. Amen? Amen? Paul knew he had been justified by God through Jesus Christ. Amen? He had the assurance that nothing would disturb his peace because he had been justified. Paul never had a day when he said, as long as I don't sin again, I've got peace with God. You never, ever, ever, you don't ever, ever, never, ever hear Paul make a reference to that. Oh, I'm justified and I have peace with God as long as I don't sin again. <laughs> Paul knew he was justified. Yes. Paul knew that he had peace. Paul knew that he was going to... Paul said, why am I doing the things I don't want to do? And why do I... Why, I got Whatever I got... You know the thing. <laughs> I had to throw that in. Why am I doing the things I don't want to do? And why don't I do the things I should do? That's the thing. <laughs> Woo! That's my political speech for tonight. Amen. Paul said that because he was having some struggles in his flesh, man. He wanted to do some things. Oh, but, oh, he had battles. No, I don't want, you know what? A good thing would be to do, just, let's just take some time and just, just read God's Word. Oh, but I'm kind of sleepy, man. I'm tired. I don't feel like doing it, but I know, I know I ought to do it. Reading the Bible would be a good thing. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Man, I just don't know if I feel like getting back up off the floor again, you know. Amen. Because I'm so spiritual, I get down to my knees and pray. Amen. <laughs> I ain't like this guy here. <laughs> but that would be a good thing to get down and pray. Amen. It'd be a good thing to call somebody up on the phone and say, Brother, I'm thinking about you today, and I know that you're not feeling well. I just want you to know I'm praying for you. But I don't feel like doing it. Maybe Brother Mike could call. You know, maybe he will. That'll just take the load off me and... 
You know, those are good things to do, but the flesh says, I don't want to do those things. Paul went through that. In my opinion, the greatest apostle that lived was the Apostle Paul. Amen. And he struggled. Yeah. What's that say about you and I? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. I think we're all going to do some struggling every now and then. But there's one thing about it. Paul never ever questioned his peace with God. <laughs> Dear Christian friend, I love you so much that I'm trying my best. And I prayed and asked God uh, to empower me with His Holy Spirit tonight that I could have truth and nothing but the truth yes. for you to hear yes. so that maybe your heart would be touched. I want you to leave here tonight understanding what the Word of God says about you having perfect peace with God if you're born again because you have been justified. Yes. Jesus rose from the dead. Can you say amen to that? Yes. If you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead and you received Him as your Savior, He has given you perfect peace with Him tonight. Amen? Now listen, we live in this world. You, uh, you've got Jesus in you and the world coming at you. Amen? Right. Yes. Bad things happen. You might have went through stuff today I would have no idea about. And you're like sitting here in the, and your stomach's all in knots. Yeah, that's life. That's yeah. what it is. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, the stock market crashed again. Amen. Yeah. Well, glory to God. I've got peace with God. Yeah. With God. Amen. Yes. It's going to rise again. Amen. Yeah. I'll still have peace with God. And you'll still have peace with God if you're saved. Now listen. Your performance may not be what you think it ought to be. Amen. You may, not, you may look at somebody else and say, well, I, I wish I'd maybe act like they do or do what they do. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. God made them them, and God has made you you, yeah. gave you your personality, and God gave you the things he wants you to do, so you just do the best you can with what God wants you to do. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what, you're going to find some good peace about yeah. that. Amen. Amen. Well, let me just ask you this. Let me ask you this. Is this message okay or would you rather me talk to you about your sins that you've been doing all day? <laughs> Amen. Which part do you like the best? <laughs> Amen. Because <laughs> I know what you did. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm just kidding. No. Let me be clear about this. Grace Way Fellowship Church is not light on sin. And what I'm saying here tonight I can hear the echoes of, oh, he's given people a license to sin. I don't give anybody no license because it's like this. You and I have been sinning pretty good without a license That's to begin right. with. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's just give Jesus Christ a big old head tonight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know what peace is? The definition here, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. Here's another definition and I really like this. The blessed state of devout and upright men after death. Let me tell you something. <coughs> Excuse me. You're looking at a dead man tonight. What am I saying? I am dead to Adam. Yeah. Amen. I'm dead to Adam. You're looking rather at a resurrected man. You're looking at a man that's been quickened by the Holy Ghost of God. Amen. I have been made alive. Therefore I have peace with God. A dead man cannot have peace with God. But an alive man can. Think about this. The prodigal son went out and did some crazy things. Amen? I've went out and done some crazy things. But the prodigal son in the Bible did not fear his father, for if he had feared his father, he would have not come back to his father. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Think about Peter. Denied Jesus three times. Then he went out and wept bitterly. Jesus was crucified and buried, and when he was risen, and, and Peter sees him there on the shore, he Peter jumps out of the boat and swam to the shore because he didn't fear Jesus. He wanted to go to him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. An alive man, a resurrected man, has no fear of God Amen. because the war is over. Yes. Now we have perfect peace with our Heavenly Father, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Amen. Jubilee, jubilee. Oh, I'm thankful to be saved tonight, aren't you?
Amen. I have been declared justified and I have been made righteous. And get this one. I've been made innocent. Yes. You're innocent. Amen. You've been made innocent by God. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you Jesus did not leave any sins left undone at the cross. Right. Amen. Amen. So why am I telling you all these things? Let me come back to one thing I've already said. The enemy is going to come after you. He's going to give you all kinds of excuses why I'm wrong, why you may have, may have never heard anything like I've said tonight before. And the devil's going to come by and say, your peace with God is in jeopardy. Your peace with God is in jeopardy. God is going to pay you back. I'm not sure that God will forgive that sin. Or how many times are you going to keep doing the same sin over and over? Do you really think God is going to let this go without punishment? Hmm. You're backslid. Let me just say here, you will not find the word backslide or backslid in the new covenant. Amen. In the New Testament of grace, you will not find the word backslid or backslide. Right. You need to rededicate to God. You don't see believers in the new covenant rededicating to God. And here is why. Here's God's answer to all seven accusations that the devil just made. And it's found in Romans. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the answer to every accusation that Satan comes along and accuses you over. Therefore, being justified by faith, I have peace with God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen? Amen? I've said a lot of things tonight that will upset a legalist. Yeah. What is a legalist? You hear this phrase and this term with us a lot of times. Well, a legalist is somebody who adds to the grace of God. Yeah. Anytime you add what I can do along with Jesus on the cross or His resurrection, that's legalism. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I said it earlier, and I'm going to close with this. Come on up. Let's get ready to sing a song. It's Jesus Christ or nothing. <laughs> Amen? It's Him or nothing. If, it, if you got something added to Jesus, it's poison. It's hurting you. Amen? Amen. Uh, God wants you, listen, ladies and gentlemen, God wants you and I, you mean, I, I know that you've not heard this in a lot of churches that I've been familiar with, but God actually wants you to enjoy your life here. Amen. He really does. He saved you so that you would have a life with more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Yes. How do we have that? Jesus Christ. He gives life more abundantly. Amen? Amen. Am I against sin? You better doggone believe I'm against sin. Don't do it! It'll hurt you. It'll kill you. It'll drive you crazy. You'll lose your sleep at night. It'll make you sick. It'll hurt people around you. Yeah. Don't do it. Stay away from it. Get as far away from it as you can. Right. I hate sin. I'm upset whenever I sin. And people sin every day. But God gives me the assurance, and every born-again believer the assurance, that when we do sin, we still have peace with Him. He does not turn from us. God does not slight us. God is not going to send us out to a woodshed and beat us half to death. He did not come to be a taskmaster. He came to deliver us. Amen. Amen. If you think it's up to you, it's all wrong. It's all up to Jesus and it's already been done. It is finished. Amen. Amen. And He rose from the cross. <laughs> oh, excuse me. He rose from the dead. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. That's all I got to say tonight. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't know somebody tonight. Amen. We'll get to that in just a minute there, sister. Thank you. I just want you to know tonight, if you need to pray about something, I, I'm inviting you to come forward tonight. Let's stand to our feet and let's sing Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Amen.